Welcome to the digital maze. You have entered into an infinite space of virtual reality. Do not let yourself be consumed by it. Seek the doors that will lead you back to your true reality. Do not trust your senses. This is only a simulation. Obsolete Gaming TV. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to Games Master, a truly swashbuckling blend of video game news, tips, reviews and challenges. Coming to you from our special offshore camp where men are men and the halibut get nervous. So who will walk away with tonight's golden joystick? Let's go to Games Master. Hello and welcome to the Games Way. I hope you are comfortably settled in. I thought we'd spring into action this week with a jolly caper on Super Mario World. The level I've set aside is Donut Plains 1. Your assignment is to collect 200 coins and exit the level in less than 1 minute 15 seconds. Au revoir. And donning the mantle of everybody's favourite plumber is Catherine Allen from Guernsey. <laughs> Now, Catherine, tell me something interesting about Guernsey. Oh, well, the people are friendly and there's lovely beaches and the computer games are cheaper. That was three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. We won't worry about that. All right, now, Catherine, how have you been doing in practice? Oh, well, I've been doing OK. I think I'll do it. OK, well, if you'd like to sit yourself down, we'll see if you can crack this challenge. And joining me for a cosy chat tonight is Frank O'Connor from Super Action. Frank, have you ever been to Guernsey? No, but I've often dreamed about it in a special way, Dominic. <laughs> Haven't we all? Now, Frank, any tips? One minute, 15 seconds to get 200 coins a night. That's quite tough. Well, it's especially tough on this level. There are less than 200 coins on the screen. What she has to do is find a secret pipe, go in and find all the coins in there. OK, then. Catherine, are you ready? Then off you go. Off goes Catherine here. And Mario's powered up immediately to Super Mario. Now she has to find the pipe. And it should be fairly easy, seeing the pace she's taking this screen at. She's gone very, very fast indeed here. She's only been going for 15 seconds. She's through the halfway stage. She's powered up again to Super Mario. Now, what's this, pipe. Frank? She's gone down into a secret world. There's a feather which should make her fly. Yep. OK, up she goes. She's just coming up to 30 seconds. Millions of coins. She should do this, no problem. Coins she in just... abundance. Yeah. More coins the time's in ticking now. Yeah. Time is ticking away, Frank. She has a... coming up for 35 seconds left. She still has quite a few coins to go out. That's right. 30 seconds left now. She's gone over the top once and... That's it. That's it. She's got the 200 coins. She's just got to get out of here. She has got 21 seconds to get out. It's going to be very, very tight indeed here. She still I, has to reach the end of this level. And she there's does, quite a few baddies in the way. But she's got a cape, Frank. Now she'll be able to knock them out of the way with that. And here she goes. She's only got seven seconds left. She's nearly there. Five, and there is. four, three. Oh, she's done it. She's out. Two seconds left. And Catherine completes the challenge. Well done, Catherine. That has to be one of the most staggering displays I've seen from anyone in the garb of the famous plumber. Did you have any problems at all? I was pretty confident and I thought I was going to do it. OK, well, Catherine, Guernsey has another interesting thing now because, Catherine, you are the winner of tonight's Games Master Golden Joystick! <laughs> So, 
So let's have another round of applause for our gallant winner, Catherine Allen. <laughs> Our three reviewers have flown out desperate for some offshore ecstasy. Will they find it? Let's check out this week's offerings. This week, gird your mouse fingers as we look at role-playing games. First up on the Super NES, defeat dastardly dragons in Draken. On first playing Draken, it didn't take me long to discover that the plot is so linear that I wouldn't be surprised if British Rio had a hand in the design. At times the animation really isn't as smooth as it could be. I spent a very long time trying to fight what I thought was a blob of jelly. I think it turned out to be a plague of rats in the end. The story goes that the Draken have left the countryside barren, which perhaps explains why there's nothing actually to do in the game. Next, on the PC, travel back to pre-Bundesbank medieval Germany in Darklands. Darklands is mean, moody and magnificent. The presentation of the game is superb. The graphics are lavish and it works very well. The sheer size of the play area and the complexity of the gameplay make sure I'll return to it again and again. And finally, on PC, Lupine Mutations and other irritations in Legends of Valor. Legends of Valor is completely unrivaled in its level of detail and complexity. I enjoy playing Legends of Valor a lot, and I think it would also be a good game for people who haven't played many RPGs before, because it is so easy to get into. Now it's time for some hardware reviews, and its cheeky phallic references are plenty as we look at four of the latest joysticks attempting to alleviate your gaming exasperation. First, strengthen your shore yukins with the Capcom Street Fighter II joystick. This is pretty good. It's more like an arcade joystick, and it? it's got these nice, neat little buttons on here, and you've got an added feature, which are these turbo sections, which enable you to keep your finger down on the button instead of repeatedly pushing it for quick action and quick kicks and punches. Definitely one for the Street Fighter II fans. It's good, but is it really worth the money? I don't think so. Next up, floating hands action ahoy with the U-Force. It's not like any other joystick. It's got no handle, no fire buttons or jump buttons. It works by light sensors on the equipment. The machine doesn't respond to any of your controls that you give it. It just dives all over the place. Um, it's, it's in a world of its own. Absolute world of its own. No good at all. Guide your chassis into a slipstream or two with the Logic 3 freewheel. Now this really is the driving man's dream for any kind of driving game because it's so realistic. You just obviously turn right to right, left to left, and to accelerate you just push the, um, the whole wheel forward and then to slow down you pull it back. It's really sensitive but that is also a problem because it does take quite a long time to get used to it. Once you do master it, it's excellent. Basically, it gets the thumbs up for me and it's also a very good price. Finally, three cheers for consumer exploitation. It's the characteristics. Gone are the days of playing around with your own small and rather insignificant joystick. Instead, you've got the chance to deftly caress Batman's bulge or do the same with Aliens' fiddly bits. Got various different characters here. They've got Terminator 2 and Bart Simpson. But on the whole, an excellent range. I'm Really pretty impressed with it, and I'd buy that any day. My I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? All of these hand pieces will be on display at Games Master Live. Here's all the info you'll need. The dates, December 4th, 5th and 6th, the place, the Birmingham NEC. For information on bookings, call the NEC box office on 021-780-4133. Some handy hardware hints there. Now it's special guest time, so it's over to Games Master for tonight's Celebrity Challenge. My next challenge has the unsavory title of Soccer Brawl. <laughs> Futuristic gladiators wage war on each other under the skimpy guise of a football match, using supercharged ballistic shooting powers to blast the opposition. To keep the carnage to a minimum, I have limited the game to two one-minute halves. My gaze will be most decidedly averted.
Now our challenger wanted to play someone suited to the footballing fisticuffs of this game. So please welcome Callum Green against one of the hardest men in football, Vinnie Jones! <laughs> Welcome, Callum. Now, Vinny, do you get a chance to play a lot of computer games? Yeah, I've just got one there, Commodore. Oh, yeah? yeah. Any, any favourite games on that? I like playing the golf games and the football games on them, yeah. All right, now, Carl, on the football pitch, this man takes no prisoners. Have you got a couple of surprises up your sleeve for him? Uh, I'm going to keep them secret, but hopefully a different ball game today, yeah. OK, then. Right, if you'd like to take your positions, Vinny on the right, Callum on the left, we'll get ready to kick off. And joining me in the dugout is Game Zone's Jeremy Daldry. Welcome, Jeremy. Thanks, Dominic. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. Now, very listen, good. obviously, Callum's got his work cut out for him today. Any tips you can give him? Well, I think he's got a tough match ahead of him. I think just to play as dirty as he possibly can, really. And that's the key to this game. So we've got two one-minute halves. Are our two competitors ready for kickoff? Then off you go. OK, I think we have Callum playing from left to right, Japan, and Vinny playing from right to left, Korea. So Callum's got it, he's waving up. Oh no, Vinny's got it again. Now, these power meters at the top. Oh dear, I don't have to stop that there. Oh, it's a goal already! Oh, straight in the first half. Oh, that was a power shot there, Jeremy. That was. You look at the power meters on the top, when they start to flash, player can play a special power move. And I think Vinny's going to about to pull another one. Oh, Vinny is a... Now, this is captain here. That's his captain with, with, with the pigtail. You can always tell the captain. Oh, oh dear! It's a superb shot. So you can actually wipe out the other players with the strength of your foot one. You certainly can. You can knock them for six. And, uh, oh, my word. Lovely sliding tackle by Callum. Oh, first of the other man's got it. Oh. oh, assisted by the post. Oh, and it's a corner kick. That was a remarkable save from close range there by Callum. Vinny Jones is definitely dominating this match. Quite he strongly. Is. He's got it again there. It's up for oh, the rebound. It's a diving header and a goal oh. by Vinny Jones. So it's 2 0. Are we going to see a comeback from Callum? I think the long release, really the more impossible it looks. Now, this looks probably needs a break for Callum. He takes a shot, he oh. takes out one man. Now, we're coming to the end of the first half. The referee looks at his watch and he blows the whistle. <laughs> so it's half time here at Games Master Stadium. Vinnie Jones is leading Callum Green by two goals to nil. If you want to find out the outcome of this amazing soccer challenge, join us after the break. <laughs> in the middle of soccer brawl on the Neo Geo. Vinny Jones is leading young upstart Callum Green by two goals to nil. Are our two competitors ready? Yep. Then kick off the second half. Oh! Now, Gemma, we are looking for something special from Callum here. We certainly are. Callum's got it all to do in the second half, but I feel that he's got it in him if he just pulls it all together now. OK, the teams haven't swapped sides because this is future football and you don't mess about with girls' plays, things like that. Not at all. So Callum is in the red, shooting from left to right. And the klaxons are blaring here. Oh, lovely, the cheeky oh, oh. kick from Callum there. Here comes Callum again, he's just got to straighten up and let one play. Let it oh. oh, it's off the post! The goalie got a tip to it, so, so it's a close, corner so here. Close. It's over there, are we going to see? Oh, it's going to take him! Oh, no, the goalie gets to it again. I think Callum's basically out of it here, but is he going to get a goal for Pride? Maybe a last minute surge and get one goal, maybe two if he's lucky. But here comes Vinny, Vinny's powering up the field, and he lets a shot goal. Attack. But he saved it, he's just going to put that right up the part now and see what he can muster. We're getting very, very close. The time is ticking away. The referee looks at his watch. He's Final carrying goal. on. Oh, oh, my word. A lovely save by Callum oh. keeper. There's people on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Oh. Thank you. Well, Vinny, you certainly looked at home there. Well, I see all the dirty tactics, and I thought it would uh, slip into my game. <laughs> he came back at you well in the second half, though, Callum. Yeah, it was much tighter. I think um, he got a bit dirtier himself and uh, sorted me out a little bit. Well, Callum, what can you got to hand it to the guy? He's a great player. Yeah, I think the joystick's going to the guy with the best ball control here. I think he played well today. OK, then. Well, like you say, Vinny, you've got an FA Cup medal with Wimbledon, but this is an even bigger prize than that because Vinny Jones is the winner of the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> so let's 
Let's have another round of applause for Callum Green and today's special guest, Vinnie Jones! After those frantic frolics, it's time for a gentle hover up to Games Master's helipad for the consultation zone. Welcome up to the helipad. What's your query? On Super Mario World, when I'm flying around the ghost house in the Valley of Bowser, I can see a key, but I can't get to it. Can it be reached? It can indeed, so listen carefully. The opening is obviously too small to fly through, so collect the P-switch and return to the mystery block. Strike the block from beneath, and a fountain of coins will magically appear. By pressing right, then up on your D-pad a few times, this stream of golden currency can be guided to create a series of steps toward the key. Then strike the P-switch and the coins will turn into blocks which you can ascend to reach your goal. Thanks a lot. Think nothing of it. Next, please. Hello, Games Master. I have a problem with Rex Nebula and the gender vendors. I can get out of the underwater cave, but then a large lady falls on me. You're closer than you realize, young man. From the pool, you will need to head right until you reach a pit surrounded by leaves. Collect some of this fallen foliage and use it to camouflage the pit. Bait this trap with the delicious Twinkie fruit and simply stand back. The fruit of your labour can now be seen as the obese but somewhat dense woman is lowered towards your cunning trap. She'll fall into the hole and plug that perilous pit for the rest of the game. Well, thank you. Time for just one more, I think. Hello, Games Master. How can I help you? On Bad Gravity, I can't seem to kill the Guardian on level 9. What should I be doing? There's a perfectly good reason for this. He can't be killed. Fly at his feet and he'll move towards you. At this point, leap lively over him and proceed to cross the fire pit with your transporter. By so doing, you will live to fight another day. Thanks. That's it for the moment. Though I must say, I do rather enjoy my role as agony uncle. Bye for now. So, some sound advice for everyone to be getting on with there. Now it's time for tonight's final challenge, but instead of going back to Chrome Dome for it, we've got something a little bit special lined up. I'd now like to welcome back one of our guests from the first series. He is undefeated for over three years at games playing, one of the greatest games players in the world, the Sega European champion, Danny Curley. <laughs> So, um, listen, Danny, we know that you're actually, your job is actually as a games tester. Yeah. So how many hours a day do you play? Seven. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> now, Danny, because you're so good, this isn't just any old challenge. What we're going to do, we're going to throw it open to the audience. Anybody in the audience can nominate any Sega game and you will take them on at it. How, how do you feel? Uh, I'll have a go at it anyway. OK, so if there's anyone in the audience who fancies the chances on any Sega game, please stick your arms up. OK, right, there's uh, quite a fair few there with their arms up. And, uh, oh, tell you what, there's a rather enthusiastic young gentleman there with a the quite natty little cap on. Could you please come down, please? Give a round of applause for our challenger. Welcome to Games Master. Hi. Now, what's your name? John Morrison. And where have you come from today, John? We're in Hertfordshire. OK, lovely. So what's your challenge for Curly, then? I want to do a speed challenge on Sonic. So what, any particular level? Spring Yard Zone 2. Right. Speed challenge on Spring Yard Zone 2. How can you, do you think you can do that, Curly? Yeah, I'll have a crack at beating him. OK, then, Johnny, if you'd like to go first, uh, plop yourself down in the hot seat there. And um, we'll get ready to play. And joining me in the commentary box tonight is Dave Perry from Sega Pro. Dave, welcome back to Games Master. Great to be back, Tom. 
OK, now, any tips you can give John for this uh, level on Sonic? It's a speed challenge, so stick to the top of the screen and just go like the clappers. OK, great. John, are you ready? Yeah. Then off you go. And here goes everybody's favourite hedgehog, and he's slowed down a bit there. Good tactic, Dave? Not a good tactic, no. The best tactic is to go over that left-hand side, hit that spring, and that gives you the speed you need to the start of the challenge. So, actually, he's, uh, you won't be too happy with that. OK, well, this is obviously a very, very tricky area here, Dave. He's been quite cautious. A nice approach. You've got to be cautious with these, these balls, because you've got to get it just right as they spin around. So if they spike you, 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 you're dead. OK, we've got the timer in the top left-hand corner there. He's just on 80 seconds, but he's had a hit. Um, more Not importantly, it's going to slow him down, Davis. Yeah, yeah, but he should have been about 14 seconds there, so he's behind. Okay, so the timer says 25 seconds, though it's still not bad. He's got on quite a good time here, Davis. No, no, he's doing well. He just avoided going down there. If he'd have fallen into that chasm, he'd have got into a pinball area, which would have taken him ages to get out, and the chance would have been over. Oh no, he's hit another one there. He still managed to pick up a ring, which means he can afford to get hit by something. Is that That's right? That's true. Dave? If he's got the ring, then he's still got another hit. Yeah. But if he didn't have the ring, then he'd be killed if he got hit again. Okay. Oh my God, people are coming up as there. Yeah, they're oh, lovely oh, yeah. little bit of jumping there. And he avoided those little men that were chasing him. They're very tricky because oh. they're very, very fast. OK, he's coming up 47, 48 seconds. He's quite near the end of the level. And 49 oh. seconds. A very, very good time by John Morrison. <laughs> Thank you. Right, John, if you'd like to vacate your seat and make way for Danny Curley for his challenge. Now, Dave, uh, John may have had a couple of uh, hiccups there and then, but uh, 49 seconds is not to be sniffed at. Still an excellent time. Still an excellent time. Barring nerves, though, I've got a feeling Danny might just, might just pip it. OK, Danny, are you ready? Off you go. Danny's got 49 seconds to beat. I mean, it's, it's no slight of a time, Dave. You can't get too confident. It's a very, very good time now. He can't afford very many mistakes. Well, that's a very good start. That he's very good start. He got the, the speed. He got the speed there that he needed. Okay, Get up here, get through these creatures. He's got his time in the top left hand corner. 10 seconds, he's doing very oh, well. Superb, yeah. superb. Avoided those Excellent. And he's at the top in 14 seconds. I think at this stage, John was about on 20 well seconds. Ahead. And the crowd well have whipped up now. to a frenzy here. They know it's going to be a close one. Yeah, oh, he missed the pinball God. zone. If he'd fallen down there, he'd have been out of it. He's made no mistakes so far. It's a perfect, it perfect really time. Has. Danny's had the perfect round this time. 28 Going seconds through. is a good Watch out for the little men. Little ball men will be coming any minute now. Little spazzes, right, here this they is come. The last difficult bit. He's made this very simple. This is a, that, man. Yeah, oh, this is a out. superb time from Danny Corley. Real he's time. carving up, but he's still got his very near the end there. But I think he's going to do it. It's a perfect he's example. Four seconds for Brilliant. Danny Corley. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, John, bad luck, mate, um, but it was, it was a very good time you got there. So, so what, what was the difference in the end, do you think? Well, I think I lost it on one of the jumps, but uh, for me, it was a good time. OK, great. Now, Daniel, there's no, there's no golden joystick for you, Daniel, because you're far too good. And what we're going to do is we're basically keeping you on each week until someone can beat you. Are, you. are you happy with that? Do you think we'll actually find someone who can beat you? You have to look long and hard, but one day. All right. A round of applause, please, for John Morrison and the singer champion, Danny Kelly. Thank you, boys. Up go. Well, another show reaches its joyous denouement. On Auntie Marisha's hostess trolley tonight, we have salmon and broccoli quiche. We'll see you same time next week. Good night.